It's about two, and they can actually contain up to seven gallons of water from that. Oh, it seems like they're carrying on a little stick, a little walking stick there, awesome. We'll see if we can get a better, better view. We're going to head into this watering hole, see if we can find some elephants hanging out nearby. Water, okay. Two dragons. Alright, as we're going around, look straight ahead as you're going to see the greater flamingos. They get their title greater because of their larger size. So many flamingos. Fun fact about them the group of flamingo is known as a flam. Right here, yeah, look to your left. They're using their amazing beaks to dive into the water and see what they can scoop up. Now, when they're not looking for food, they're typically going to be resting or relaxing, which they typically will do by standing up. Look at the baby, mommy! They can sleep actually like that for multiple hours, no problem at all. Two pins. Ow. Look at that, rhinos, guys. Look at them just laying right, we'll there. Moving a lot, you will see the white rhino. The white rhino is going to weigh up to 5,000 pounds an hour. Why is the rhino so fat? That's like as heavy as Dad's white shirt. They also have very wide mouths as well. Why is the hippo so fat? It's a rhino, not a hippo. Why is the rhino so fat? I don't know, babe. So we'll continue around here in just a moment. But yeah, we'll get a great view of the rhinos. They're trying to utilize that shade. Now, they're very social animals. You wouldn't think that right now, but they do love to wander around. Come together in large groups, mingling with other animals. And they definitely will migrate. They most likely probably just got here just resting for a little bit. And I'm sure they'll use that mud very soon. So we're ready to cool themselves down. And when they roll around in the mud, it kind of acts as sunscreen, protecting their skin from the harsh sun. Look on your left, far in the distance, you're going to be able to see the cheetah. Oh yeah. Run up to 60 miles an hour. They can actually maintain that incredible speed for about 300 yards before it will slow down. The cheetah's name is Cheetah. They're way back there, babe. Let's continue. You'll be able to see another cheetah there on your left as well. Now, cheetahs are actually going to be most active oh, yeah. during the daytime. Quite contrary to many predators in Africa, are much more active at night than during the day. Guacamole. Now, we're going to start to head around the Kobe's. It's a name given to rock formations in Africa. Kobe's here, home to a lot of great vegetation, also home to a lot of great, you know, shelters for animals. They utilize these rocks for many great homes. I don't see, see anything resting on top of the Kobe's at the moment, but maybe nearby there could be some animals mingling around, looking for some awesome vegetation. We're going around if you look up ahead you'll be able to see the white rhino now the white rhino is going to weigh up to five thousand pounds on average is what we're talking about oh. now fun Another fact one. white rhino in africa uh white is translated to mean white which doesn't mean white it's actually going to mean wide so they're often referred to as the wide rhino in africa oh, due to those mouths it's a great view of the white rhino Holy 
now we're going to start to make our way here around the copies as we do. Keep an eye out on your left. I don't see anything just yet within these burrows. It's raining. But these burrows, very complex tunnel system. But if you look farther back, I know they like, kind of blend in. But you will be able to see the warhogs. Warhogs. Some of the most intelligent animals in Africa. You're able to create those burrows, complex tunnel systems that can connect with one another. Warhogs can use those as homes and a great way to travel back. safely underground without being detected. Elaine in the dirt up there. Yeah, right up here on the left, I'll keep by the orange. Come on. Looking up ahead, if you look on your right, you're going to be able to see some ostriches. A little weigh about three to four pounds each, and they're incredibly durable. Ostriches! Able to withstand the force of an average person. Now we're going to be heading into Magadi Glen, home to the uh, warden's outpost and the Nigerian dwarf post, a domesticated animal in Africa. So, so we'll see what's going on here as we're going to make our way through. If you look on your left, seems like they're doing some pretty good work right now. Doing some interior car design at the moment. Doing a great job working on that. Doing some door reinforcement. Seems like they're checking on the barrels. They even can, they can even do laundry. They really use this awesome natural detergent. It's really great. All right, my friends. Really hope you enjoyed your tour with us today. Now, if you want to see more animals lined up ahead. What? Making our way down, let's see what we can find up ahead here. That white one is a look, Mimin, look at him. on your left, you can see the African wild dogs, also known as the painted dogs, some of the most efficient hunters in Africa. That's why, that's because they're going to be led by two alphas, an alpha male and an alpha female. They're going to be leading the group together as a team. That's us, awesome, babe. What? Lead the group together as a team. Yeah. What? I see them. Wait. Oh yeah, you see them. What are you seeing? Over there. Deer something over there. Okay. So we'll go by the maybe? wild dogs that are going to be resting, trying to enjoy the shade as it's starting to get to the hottest point of the day. Oh, look at that guy. You'll be eligible to see the stable antelope, the official one, but mother reserve. Those long curved dogs that they're going to use as shields to protect themselves against predators in the area. Look on your left there, you're going to be able to see the springbok. Springbok, one of the fastest uh, land animals in Africa, able to run up to 55 miles an hour. Well, that's they're also able to leap up to 13 feet high vertically in the air. We're gonna go around and you're gonna 
Greenville Zebra Park Mountain Zebra. Where is the zebra? Among common types of zebras, you know, in the more mountainous regions of Africa, high altitudes. Now, if you look in your range, well, you'll see the wildebeest. Now, what's just the Hartman's Mountain Zebra apart from other types? A zebra is known as a dual app underneath their nets. It's That's just kind of skin flap, allowing for better blood circulation, which also in turn there? allows them to more easily adapt Real their dubies. body to different climates. Oh, okay. they look crazy. So they can adjust the comfortably to whether it's really hot or really cold out in the mountains. Daddy, I want to see them. Well, I'm going to really okay. allow them to adapt anywhere. You ain't gonna see nothing on the other side over here. Seven, seven, seven. Hey, I get a picture of you with the wildebeest. Look at mom. We're dead. So we're gonna hold here for just a moment as we wait to continue on the move. So we're just gonna hang out. Yeah, so let's continue along here. Continuing along, if you look in your radio, they'll see, spot some more wildebeest known to be very iconic travelers. Able to, able to migrate up to a thousand miles across the savannah. Look out your right window, straight in the, straight away. Look at them. Yeah. Oh my gosh, beautiful. The old if you look up ahead on your right, you'll be able to see the Maasai giraffes. They're going to be standing about 16 to 20 feet tall, very active eaters of giraffes. They're usually in the it's wild and be looking for food or eating food for up to 20 hours a day. I like to move at a nice and casual speed. But if they really need to put some pep in their step, the giraffes can run up to 30 miles an hour. Oh, oh dang. I Looks like there's some kind of a bowl back there, too. Oh. Yep, Look, here's another one, Min Min. Look! More giraffes. Oh. Another glory view of the giraffes is you'll see them use their oh long green salt on the wrap around the branches. And actually, giraffe's tongue is colored purple, allowing them to avoid sunburn. That one's cool. Even that one's cool. So it's head by the wildebeest here. Elephants. We're going to continue along as we start to head into a water mole bed. A very popular spot for us the various animals to revive. It's over on this side, B. In particular, we're going to be greeted by quite a popular animal bed. We're going to see the African elephant. Switch sides, go. They're going to weigh up to 10 to 12,000 pounds on average. You're going to see them waving their ears a lot. That's actually a great way to cool themselves down. When they wave their ears enough, they're able to decrease their body temperature by 15 degrees. It's like their own personal air conditioning. Look at how beautiful. How about that? Really handy. Majestic. Look at them just eating. That's a baby. That ain't no one. Yeah, that one's not too big. That's a baby. So we'll continue around here as we're going to be heading further into the trees again. As we're going to try to search for a uh, squirrel and stuff, and usually when you spot one, others are not too far behind. They like to draw together in large groups to try to, you know, have strength in numbers. So let's see what we can find up ahead here. We need to reweld this bridge. So let's see what we can find up ahead. Now, fun fact, the trunk of an elephant can contain up to 20,000 muscles.
Okay. Look at all the elephants. With their trunk, they can perform basically any tasks, such as, you know, picking up branches, you know, uh, pushing, pulling, throwing objects, left in the drink of water. Oh, there's a bunch uh, more. Obtain food. Yeah, that's for animals, okay? Mommy, you guys look on that side, and I'll look on this side with you. Oh, look at that over there. Oh, cool. Hey, what is that? That uh, looks like a. So if you look on your left, you're going to be able to see the greater kudu, the tan for no horn. Look at Shady. Look on your right, you're going to see the little coffee. Okay. Now if you look on your left again, you'll see the salvold stork. And further up oh on your left, you're going to be able to see the bongo with that horn first. Those are named. Babe, yeah, we don't even need to go to Africa. Look, we got it right here. Of oh, the bongo there. Known look at this the guy. Because they're what? rarely seen. Yeah. Oh. And they're going to be use, utilizing those, those, those amazing horns to more easily navigate through the forest terrain. Oh yeah. Flamingo, where? Mommy, where's the flamingo? Maybe a there. They're known to be relatives of the giraffe one because they have a similar skeletal structure. Flamingo. Two, they both have a similar The pink one, the only pink one up there, babe. horns that, that are on top of their heads. And lastly, they both have what's known as a long prance all the time, allowing them to reach even higher into the trees to wrap around branches. What do you think they do in the winter time? Not much of a winter Sure. Now, look on your left, you'll look see it. the black rhino. We're going to weigh up to 3,000 pounds on average. What is that? Name? We'll that I didn't find this particular type of rhino by their upper lip, but they have. Uh, I don't think that all the black rhinos going extinct. Yeah. Everyone's poaching them in the wild. Elephants are too. Keep your eye out for animals. So we'll continue around here as we're going to start to head out of the little turf forest and make our way into the Safi River. On the more of the aquatic wildlife park here on the reserve. So let's go get aquatic. Let's go see what we can find up there. So as we are making our way down, keep an eye out on your right. Mm -hmm, sorry. If you look on your right, you'll be able to see the pink back pelicans. Now, if you look in that far right corner, you'll start to see the Nile hippo. I'm trying to get a better view of the hippo, but we're going to be closer to the water, too, so no worries if you can't get a good view of that particular hippo. Now, you'll be able to see the pink back pelicans. It's their name because that pink color is on their skin. So let's find your amazing season. Stand up. Look over here. Come here. Hurry. No, don't stand up. He's way Now, looking on the left, you also will be able to see the rest of the river, so keep an eye within the water. As you might be able to see a hippo floating along. You might be able to see a hippo we'll sink to the bottom of the water and walk along the bottom. Bubbles is over there, They're going to be swimming along. Now, when they swim, they're typically going to sink to the bottom and walk along the bottom of the water. I don't think he sees them. Look, there he is, Min Min. Look, there's two of them down there. Oh, so cool. So as we're continuing along, we're going to start to head out of the South River into the grasslands. So the grasslands known to some of the most iconic animals in Africa. We'll also own to some iconic animals. We'll me one here in just a moment. Eat it. 
to my friends the Zermakins. So my friends as we're making our way down again. To a tree. We're gonna start to go by the baba tree here in your right. Baba tree. Look at that tree right there. Big old tree. Wow. So we'll see what we can it's find up ahead here. Tree. As we're gonna make our way down into the grasslands. This is why we've put in so many doors today. Yeah, yeah, we can go to Africa Safari. Well, now, Africa, now, we now as we're heading on down, we might get in the close range of some of these animals. Which will be awesome once this please remember to be respectful to these animals at all times. So please, no calling out to them, no shouting, gesturing, whistling, or making any animal noises towards them. Just because we don't want to scare them away. So thank you so much for understanding. Let's try to get a better view here. We're actually going to head a little closer, try to get us a little bit of a better view. As many of those as I can, but hey, it'll be a great reference that you can utilize throughout our adventure today. That's a lot of animals. It is, isn't it? Now our first stop today is going to be the Little Aturi Forest. So we're going to turn in here into just a second. And in this forest, a lot of these animals in the wild, they utilize camouflage and hiding techniques. So we're going to have to 